Hello, craft beer friends, and welcome to Season 9, Episode 17 of Tap to Craft Podcast. I am Denny Luce, coming to you from Boise, Idaho, and my partner in craft, the dog whisperer, and my favorite Florida man from Tampa, Florida, Mr. Chris McKenzie. How are you doing tonight, my friend? I am... Um... Still a little buzzed. Um, <laughs> I the, saw you were doing a little pre-funkin'. The, yeah, I, it's right. I had a little uh, pre-funkin' going on over at Gasparilla. I, we needed dinner, and uh, oh. you know, Tina and Aria were out, and I, I went, okay, I, I don't feel like cooking. Pizza. Let's have pizza. Oh, yeah. Well, you where do you go no for pizza? pizza. Huh. Gasparilla. I, yeah, I go to Gasparilla. And uh, Chance over at Gasparilla, not only... Did he take great care of me when I told him I was going to talk crap about him before we got on live? And he said that he was going to, uh, uh, you know, stream it on his laptop. Oh, uh, in the bar, and which was sitting behind the bar. Uh, he said, you should stream it to a TV. And I went, and he goes, uh, can't, <laughs> so, can't. Well, okay. So we'll, we'll, maybe one day we'll figure out a way to either go live from there or stream it onto a TV or something. I don't know. Okay. We'll, we'll see. Well, welcome, Chance. Hope but you enjoy. I'm great. Doing great today. We're getting moved into the house. The picture I showed, the video I showed you, just, you know, you know when, when you move into a house, you, you know, you just uh -oh, behind crap the scenes. everywhere. Oh, boy. But like I said, thank God for green screens because <laughs> no one could tell. <laughs> So yeah, that's, it's, it's, it's magic. It is. It's magic. There's just beer behind me now and not a bunch of random crap over in the corner. So, um, oh, okay. I'm great. How are you today? I'm doing good. I am, uh, I'm waiting to crack open some beers here in a few minutes. Always enjoy chatting with you. We had some good pre pre game chat with our, with our live listeners. Thank you guys for joining us. We always love having interaction with all of our great listeners who watch us on Facebook live as we record. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to trying our last blind tasting beer provided by our buddy, Jeff Seiler. Uh, he says it should be one and we should be able to knock out of the park and get it pretty easy. So I'm hoping we can do that. Um, but you know what? Uh, I'm getting thirsty, but before we get, to that beer, I just want to let anyone new listening to the show know what Tap the, Pat, Tap the Craft podcast is all about. We are an educational podcast focused around celebrating all things craft beer because we want to assist you, our listener, along in your craft beer journey and adventures. And you are listening to episode 225, We're recording on Monday, March 6, 2023. And yes, we are live on Facebook. So if you want to join us, during our recording session, sometime you can do that easily by just hitting that link when it pops up in your Facebook feed and uh, joining us. And uh, we love to interact with, with you and uh, we can answer your questions live on air. And this episode, we will be discussing whether or not beer festivals are still relevant and what needs to change to keep people going to them and keeping them from shutting down. This is and a like a I was yep. saying, this is a phenomenal topic to be on because <laughs> it just reminded me Kyle Marrero from Marker 48 just hopped on and said, cheers, you uh -oh. two. Denny, it's currently Tampa Bay Beer Week. Oh, damn. And you guys are, and when, when is, it, is, is it start right now or is it start later? In the it week? started yeah, yesterday. What's, wait, what's today? Today's Monday. Monday. There was a bunch of stuff happening yesterday. Oh, and my then, goodness. And then usually, you know, back in the day, you know, the big thing that we always looked forward to was Hanapu Day. Yes. It would have been this coming Saturday, which it still is. It's just not a big <laughs> festival, but apparently in 2024, that's coming back. So, oh, it's we not, shall see. Oh, I thought it, you said it was coming. Oh, so it's not coming back till next year. Correct. Yeah. So oh, it, I misunderstood the, what you said last, or I thought so you, they're, you, they're going to be doing the release. Before. Yeah. This is going to oh. be, uh, it started Friday. Thank you, Kyle. Um, so <laughs> I'm surprised you're on here, man, or at least sober um but it's it uh they release their hunapu at the end of every beer week mm -hmm. but usually they did the release and, and the, the big festival yeah. on kind of one big old party and uh that picture that i sent out the other day was mm -hmm. saying hey the fest is coming back next year oh, okay and okay that's pretty awesome so okay now i understand 
Now I understand. Well, enjoy Tampa, Tampa craft beer week. I always love, uh, I love when we have Idaho craft beer month, which is coming up in April. Yeah. I always enjoy that. Uh, a lot of activities going on, but Hey, let's get back to a, we're going to do our final blind tasting. I, I got sidetracked on conversation, uh, but our final blind tasting with the fourth beer provided by Jeff Seiler. We also have a Minnesota beer tasting provided by our buddy, Eric Gronley and a Wisconsin beer tasting from our buddy, Bill Schlemmer, as well as what you've already captured or got an idea of what we do. We have great beer conversation as well. So Chris, let's go ahead and start this blind tasting. You already, you're ready. I did. I'm ready to go. Um, and you know what? It's not washing out the colors this, this time. Oh yeah. We got a little frosty snowman action here. Yeah. No words for me to mess I up. I was just about to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is number four. This we are on the four, last yeah. last one. Okay, Chris, let's pop this thing open. Oh, okay. oh it's, it's, Ooh, it's dark. dark. Ooh, Ooh, that's Ooh nice. it smells very good. Oh, my goodness. Good thing I grabbed the, uh, oh, good thing I grabbed the old snifter for this one. I wasn't expecting a dark beer. But you know what? We had every other kind of beer. Why not finish off with a dark beer? I'm pouring nice and slowly, so I don't, uh, but nice head on there. See, I didn't overdo the head. Okay. So looking at this fourth beer, uh, very dark brown with a uh like a, a mocha cappuccino head, a little, little dark. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One, one finger. Yeah. One and a half finger. Just depends on how on hard there. you pour it. Yeah. Uh, coarse and fine bubbles looks creamy mm -hmm. sticking around for a little bit. Uh, the beer is completely opaque. Like I said, a dark, dark yeah, brown. I, I can't it looks see black, but I can see brown. This. Yeah. You know, the downside to these blind tastings is I ran into that. I ran into it right now. And especially last, uh, last time is that I get a beer in my head and it mm -hmm. sticks. And then I can't think of anything else. Yeah, I know I, I had a beer in my head too. So what's your beer in the head? Dragon's milk. So my beer from new Holland. So my beer that stuck in my head was old Rasputin, <laughs> mm. but this one smells We'll do some aromas here. This one kind of smells like it might have a little barrel on it. A little it. barrel on it. That's that's what that, what got me was the yeah. And no rescue doesn't have barrel. I don't think it does. Of course, I'm gonna blow no. this. You know what? It's Jeff a set Russian, us up it's a Russian imperial stout. And you're right, he did. He's gotten <laughs> he's in our head already. You guys will be totally fine. You'll totally <laughs> nail this one. And he's sitting back uh, well, just going. Bah. I'll have to wait till I get this taste because uh, I I mean, I've already this winter, I've probably drank at least eight of these uh, old Rasputin's if it is real Rasputin. So I should be able to tell right off the bat. Yeah. But I don't remember old Rasputin having any barrel. Character. It does not. It's just a Russian Imperial stout. I okay. mean, you can get barrel age. All right, let's do this. You can get barrel age ones. Or is it still cold? Still too cold. Oh. There's some vanilla at the end or something. Yeah, there is. Yeah, Eric Gronley says, I don't think it's old Rasputin. Yeah, I, I don't think it's old Rasputin either. Okay, so there is some vanilla and chocolate. It's dark chocolate. Nice dark chocolate. Yeah. Gives like a very, gives a very bitter dark chocolate. Yeah, it gives a bitterness at the finish, and it tastes like bitter chocolate. And you and I are going to sit here and taste this beer and finish it. Okay, I got to think about Russian Imperial Stouts, or oh, you know what it could be too. Ten fifty. Ten fifty. <clears throat> but I haven't had a 1050 for a while. So I don't want to jump on that. Wow. 
It's good. I I mean, he's picked so far. F- all four beers have been really tasty. This effort. I'm like ninety five percent sure on this. This having okay. barrel is yeah. definitely barrel aged. I think I think so, but it's not heavy. It's got uh, just the right amount. I mean, I swear I smell just a, a hint of bourbon barrel in there. Watch it be a barrel aged old Rasputin. <laughs> I don't think so. Eric, why would you say that? Do you you know the answer? Mm. He's trying to play it off. Oh, you know what? I, I don't think it's old Rasputin at all. That's his subtle way of going, no, it's not. Yeah. I knew that Jeff was going to, was going to, uh, okay, so let me think of other stouts. Might have a little barrel into it. It's so subtle of barrel. It's what? It's lots of good roast in it. What found, what founders uh, beers have, uh, is there a stout for founders? What is their stout? Uh, oh, KB. Screw you, Eric. <laughs> he said, I have this number four can in my glass right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, KBS oh, Eric. would be Founders, uh, but that's Kentucky Breakfast Stout. Doesn't that normally have coffee in it? I don't smell any coffee in this. I think you're right. Kentucky Breakfast Stout would have coffee in it. Yeah, because Founders, their breakfast stout, that's their big one that they have. And that's very, very coffee. But, yeah, that's the breakfast. But KBS is, what's the KBS? That's 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 Kentucky the breakfast, breakfast stout? stout. Yeah, so oh. that's the breakfast stout aged in barrels. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, this is... Uh... Man, I'm having trouble. Uh, any other guesses? It's not a milk stout, so we can. No, it's definitely not a milk stout. Definitely has. Uh, what has that bigger... about narwhal? <laughs> Does not come in cans. <laughs> oh, narwhal! Sierra Nevada's narwhal. Oh, I love that beer. Oh, it could be. Maybe it is narwhal. It's been a, I haven't had that since last year. KBS does not come in cans. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Right. Nar- comes in- narwhal could be could be narwhal. I'm trying to remember flavor. Profile. He gave us he gave us one on that one. He's Jeff. KBS does not come in cans. Move on. So those are the two that I'm stuck on. Then. It's either okay, three that I'm stuck on narwhal, 1050, or dragon. Yeah, 1050 milk. is still on my. I haven't had 1050, but I, I felt that 1050 was, was heavier than this. Not that this is light, but I, I was thinking it was heavier. Uh, is there any hint on the can? No. The number, there's only numbers on there. <laughs> I already looked. Uh, and I, okay. I guess this is a, uh, a canned date. A canned date of uh, August 26th of 21. Oh, it's even aged. It's slightly, yeah. Wow! <laughs> even gave us an aged one. Oh my, oh my goodness. This is special. It is 21. Oh, damn. Wow, Jeff. I think, okay. I feel like... Should we we guess? I feel like I'm going to get... Does Narwhal come in cans? Yeah. Yeah, I I had Narwhal in cans last year. Wait, so Eric, are you... Your cans are wrapped up too then. Because he said I've never had I've never had narwhal. This is a damn good beer if it is. Um, oh, well, oh, I didn't realize Eric's was. I didn't either. Wine tasted too. 
<laughs> wow, Jeff, you are quite the character. Sending sending us and others blind tasting. <laughs> that that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so Eric, how many did you guess correctly? Did you did you did you guess the same times that we were drinking them and then uh did you get how many did you get right? This is I didn't realize that. We would you know what we should have had if we, we were have. smart, we would have had Eric on with us while we I did mean, these tastings. We could have all done them together. I mean, we can give him the number real quick and Eric, if you want to hop on, I'll give you the the Zoom number and you can jump on. Yeah. But respond quickly if you're going to, and I'll message it to you. Yeah. I'm stuck between 1050. I'm stuck on Narwhal. And you're stuck on Narwhal? Mm-hmm. Gosh, I I do enjoy 1050, and I don't realize how much I enjoy it until I have one after a while. And Norwal, I've always enjoyed, but I just can't remember the I'm trying to remember the profile. And I'm not going to cheat and look up my untapped descriptions because that's not right. I'm so I'm just I'm going blind. I'm going to say 1050. Okay. And you're going to say Narwhal. Yep. And Eric, are you going to join us? <laughs> Do you have any comment before we uh, we unwrap this thing? We what is your presence? Because that, that was the thing too, is that it Jeff sent these to us and they're all beers that are readily available. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to jump on a different time laying down with the kiddo for bedtime. Uh, <laughs> with a beer. I hope Really? <laughs> That, that's awesome that's, that's what i yeah this yeah, is why you, this better. is why we love you guys i'm laying in bed watching this podcast <laughs> while my kid falls asleep <laughs> see our voices lull kids to sleep isn't that awesome yeah no yes well I, well we've been known to lull dogs to calmness during fireworks during yeah that's July, true so. that's true but why right. wouldn't we have the same effect on kids okay i'm gonna open it up i'm gonna okay. say 10 50. You're saying 1050. I'm saying yep. Sierra Nevada's Norwal. Oh. oh, you're right. It is yeah. Norwal. Okay. So we're going to count that as a win because we both thought of it. And again, I love this. I do love this beer. It's a great selection. Imperial Stout. Deep in our barrel room out of lights reach our legendary narwhal imperial stout rests in bourbon barrels for nearly a year after aging it emerges emer, emerges new uh, rich with notes of oak vanilla coconut layered into the stout's malt flavors of dark chocolate and espresso enjoy this yeah this is a great beer thanks jeff we're Locking gonna count this as a win yes 11.9% we, we, we on to this split one because we wanted to make sure we had a 50 50 chance of getting it right and uh narwhal, narwhal never disappoints i am and, uh, thoroughly again. impressed with us though denny that was uh, that out of four beers we guessed <laughs> two of them completely yeah. blind yeah yeah good job completely chris blind. you nailed it you nailed it no narwhal is a great beer and 1050 is a good beer too but i i think i was i'm thinking 1050 is not barrel aged, and we definitely could feel the barrel. I mean, again, the beer we could smell. Oh, there's a little bit of vanilla in there, a little bit of barrel. You can taste a little bit of the barrel, but not. It's 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 blended so well that it's not overbearing, and that's what I love about you know barrel aged beers that are done right. Is it's not overwhelming. You taste all the greatness of the beer. And just have those other flavors just mix in there to give you just the over, you know, just, just make it even better than it was. And that's what's great about this beer. So, listener, go out there and get Narwhal, barrel aged Narwhal Imperial Stout from Sierra Nevada. You won't be disappointed. We pulled out, as the description said, we pulled out the dark chocolate, we pulled out the barrel aged the vanilla. Um, Didn't touch too much on the coconut, the, but still. The, yeah. The coconut. Coconut, but again, it, I think coconut and vanilla blends together quite they a do. bit. Um, 
and the dark chocolate definitely was there. The coffee, uh, I think I, I can't say really espresso. Espresso. I I think that's just from the dark roast, but that that's normal imperial stout roast character. Um, but yeah, this is definitely a great great beer. We're some talented sons of bitches. That's all I'm yeah. gonna say. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All right. Well. You know, Jeff Seiler is a Patreon supporter, and this episode is brought to you in part by our satisfied Patreon supporters like Mike Allen, Bill Schlemmer, Amanda, and Kevin Argauer, Mark Reedy, Mike Blanchett, Tara Carlson, Jim Kutzel, and Alex Fuchs, who are our virtual producers, and Tom Byrne, Jeff Seiler, Johan Halberg, uh, Chalamasa, Massa, Mark Church, and Eric Gronley, who want to buy us a virtual beer. If you enjoy the content we provide, we invite you to support the show by toasting your host or buying us a virtual beer, or even becoming a virtual producer. You can explore the options on our support page by visiting patreon.com slash tap the craft. Jeff said, and I knew if, you guys would do it. Awesome job. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was a rough one, but well, we did it. Uh, if you'd like to contact the show with your comments or questions, you can reach us through email at tap the craft at gmail.com or on Twitter and Instagram at tap the craft. And feel free to follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash tap to craft. We do have a website at tap to craft.com. So go visit that. Uh, and we have a discord server. If you're tired of social media, where all these trolls are out there trolling you and making your life miserable when you want to just enjoy chatting about craft beer, then we have the place for you to go. Go to our discord server. You can find a link at the top of our, uh, our website page or uh, find our link at linktree dot or link link tr dot <laughs> ee at tap to crafts. It's linktree, but the uh, the e the, the the ee is dot ee. Uh, we have all of our links, and just go ahead and click and, and join our Discord server. It's a private server for tap to craft community, and you can just go and post whatever you want about beer, ask us questions, interact with our other listeners. It's just a private community for us to enjoy each other's company okay chris let's continue this conversation because now it is time to untap the craft and see what our listeners are drinking according to untapped so remember guys if you want us to read your check-ins on the show we uh will read all the check-ins if you follow me on untapped at mck1345 <clears throat> excuse me um, and we usually read the check-ins that are 24 hours prior to our recording every other Monday at 8.30 Eastern time. So um, if you're confused about that, because it was confusing to me just <laughs> saying it, send us a message on anything social. We'll respond to you if, yeah, we are recording or no, we're recording next week. So let us know. There's a lot of drinking going on. I'm in Alex Fuchs's stuff right now. Oh yeah. He probably, he just, he's, he's been traveling in Bulgaria, I think. Mm, okay. And so, and they, the first day they showed up, he must've checked into 40 beers in one day from all their visits to different places. Crazy. Okay. I didn't know Bulgaria had that many, I say Bulgaria, but maybe I'm, I don't know. We'll, we'll click on one of them yeah, here yeah. in just a little bit. Um, but we'll start off. Let's see. We'll start off with Craig Andrew right here in the Tampa Bay area. Okay. He's drinking a weird science volume three by Gulfport weird brewery. Science. Yeah, actually volume two, great <laughs> label art. Um, I tried to snag one, but I <laughs> missed out. Um, he's checking in, uh, at the Dunedin house of beer. He said, not too shabby, a little orangey for me Four cap rating for that one. Um, Alex, I, I'm going to, you're drinking a lot. Um, uh, so we're yeah. going to have to scroll through a couple of these, like the, uh, the buddies mango and passion fruit sour by Brower Nepomucin <laughs> at Nosferatu. <laughs> Oh yeah, Nosferatu. Yeah, that's yeah. Which um I I can't even read I can't even read the address on that one. Yeah, it's it looks yep. Um so let's see. He's got a ton of check-ins uh all over lots of beers. 
Uh, that's a beer. I'll drink to that. Yeah. Well, while I'm scrolling, I'm going to have some more of this uh, Norwal. Yeah, because yeah, this is, uh, by the way, Norwal, 11.9%. Yeah, <laughs> that's why mine's not completely gone yet. Well, I didn't pre-funk like you. I mm. waited till we got on the show just in case there was a big beer. And thank I was, goodness I did. I was waiting for my pizza. What am I supposed to do? Okay. We're getting we're okay. We're getting into Tampa Bay uh, beer week okay. stuff. So Alex, cheers to you for checking into so many <laughs> beers. Um, it looks like you're having a phenomenal time wherever it is that you are checking into these beers. Um Stephen Brown here in the Tampa Bay area. He's checking into all things cycle brewing at uh, at the location over in St. Petersburg. Again, it's Tampa Bay Beer Week, so he's checking into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I, there's Saturday this year, so that's their uh, the series that they usually release this time every year. Uh, Barrel aged beers all kinds of different variants of of these beers that y'all remember back in the day when we used to go stand in line for beer mm -hmm. but we don't do that anymore i wonder what that's uh what that's turned into what's the uh osner is the uh the mm. app that we buy all of our stuff on um <clears throat> so checking into a, a lot of good things like the Imperial German Chocolate Cupcake Stout with Orange by Angry Chair Brewing Company from uh, from at Angry Chair Brewing Company. Four and a half caps on that one from Stephen Brown. Um, scrolling on up the list, Bill Schlemmer is drinking a Last Snow by Funky Buddha. Sitting outside in the 83 degrees at Funky Buddha, drinking a Last Snow seems ironic. They are expecting snow. <laughs> Back at the cottage in Wisconsin, great coffee and coconut notes in this porter. Great beer, four and three quarter caps rating. I, I do like that beer. I did enjoy that. Is it still as good? It, but you said it, it kind of wasn't as good. It lost its uh, enjoyment over. The, did you the get last time. snow or used to? Are you talking no, you about get... Hawaiian Lion? Did I bring both? Oh, no, I, I've had last snow as well. Okay. Um, so I, think you brought both. I haven't had last snow in probably four ish years. Um, and it was just, I had started drinking funky Buddha beers and right around the time that they got bought out, I think it was by yeah. constellation brands. Yeah. All their beer just started to taste like crap. So I just kind of swore them off. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you brought both when we had them in, in Vegas and, and we both agree. Well, I agreed that the Hawaiian lion was, was my preferred one of the two but uh so i haven't was. yeah i haven't had this one in a long time so who knows maybe it's uh it's made a shift okay and um, and bill is in florida is is he by you no so he's if he's at funky buddha unless i'm not 100 percent sure where this location is it's in oakland park so just outside mm -hmm. of what north of miami so he's oh. on the complete opposite coast, about three okay. hours, three and a half hours south yeah, yeah. of me. Okay. But you know who you. was in town recently, Mike Allen? Yeah, I saw Mike was in Tampa and didn't even check so in with you. To in come, his come defense. Me. There's no defense. No, Mike. no. In his defense. <laughs> okay, yeah. You know what? Let's stick with that. But in, in some sort of half-assed defense for Mike couple of months ago he did message me and go hey i'm gonna be in town so i can run this marathon we should grab a beer and i said awesome let's do it he and i totally both forgot about it he showed up into town and i see him checking in the stuff on untapped at cigar city and i'm like yeah i i need to go to cigar city i have beers i need to pick up there so i and messaged him. him and well i messaged him and i said hey you want to go grab a beer and he goes uh i i leave i'm leaving soon i was like oh when are you leaving he goes tomorrow right after the race <laughs> i said you bastard how am i supposed to buy you a beer if you're gonna leave tomorrow morning and he goes i know i know oh so, maybe next right. time maybe yeah next. yeah because i yeah. I, I feel like i say this pretty regularly if you are in town and you reach out to me your first probably second maybe third beer is probably going to be on me so yeah i've been known to pick up the tab for anyone that drinks with me so you have a good chance of having free beer just saying 
<laughs> and then we'll, okay, you know, sorry take, to sidetrack. Anyway, <laughs> take goofy selfies and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, John WC is drinking a kaleidoscope, great beer, by Urban Artifact at uh, the Hill, the Hilliard Bridge. Uh, he purchased this at Heinen's grocery store. I used to work there. Um, as described, big zesty orange, pineapple, and guava, pretty bubbly, carbonated, and lightly tart and salty with a mild alcohol burn as it warms. Four? Yeah. Mm, excuse me. Four cap rating for this one. Uh, Eric Gronley is drinking a Rejuvenator by Elm Creek Brewing Company. At Elm Creek Brewing Company. Okay. He said, why not drink some liquid bread this evening? Uh, those monks were on to something good caramel malt flavor and rich four and a quarter caps for that one um another handful of check-ins from stephen brown uh he's got more beers from angry chair prodigious full circle um and a couple other ones in there john wc again is drinking a hidden headwaters by humble forager uh, a decent caramel toffee and hard to place cornbread biscuit. Cornbread good biscuit, nice. I, I would eat a cornbread biscuit. That's yeah. not much I won't eat, though. Um, <laughs> three and three quarter caps for that one. Uh, he, let's see, on to the next one. David Martin is drinking a daily serving raspberry and passion fruit by Trillium Brewing Company. Mm. Uh, drinking that at the Community Tap which I'm not sure where that is, but no notes to go along with it, but a four and a half cap rating on that beer. Um, let's see. Moving up the list. There it is. I knew we would have to find it eventually. Chad LaMassa, Chad LaMassa. continuing his check-in streak with a making out with stone fruit cobbler. <laughs> I'll give him credit. He goes after the beers with the fun names or the fun label art. So I, uh, I went to Gasparilla this evening to go pick up what well, other than pizza. They had a beer in the cooler that was called something to the effect of 2022 can go F itself. And they sold the last four pack like half an hour before I got there. And I just wanted it because, well, it had profanity on it and I enjoy <laughs> some profanity. Um, hey, what was wrong? What was so wrong with 2022? I thought 2022 was definitely better than 2021 and 2020. I feel like they've all just been a rolling dumpster fire. <laughs> uh, 2023, not off to the best start either, but they've really? just been. Uh, I'm having a good 2023. I, listen, I'm enjoying it. it... <laughs> <laughs> I, all I can think of is uh, as long as we're doing okay, then it's got to be, it's got to be good. I mean, 2020 I, was a bad year. I got appendicitis at the beginning of mm -hmm. it. And I got shingles at the end of it. Mm -hmm. It sucked the whole, and we were in COVID quarantine the whole almost the entire year. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's the time that uh, you know our trip yeah. got ruined to come out and see. Yeah, you. you didn't come. You couldn't come see. <sighs> you couldn't go to Vegas or come see me. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so twenty twenty sucked. Twenty twenty one sucked because at the end of the year I got COVID and then that, that ruined my Christmas. And we were still in a lot of quarantine. And then twenty twenty two was better because I, I wasn't sick. <laughs> I didn't die. Yeah. And then always, 2023 is great because always celebrating those little wins. <laughs> yeah. I sick. I didn't die. <laughs> uh, but Chad making out with stone fruit cobbler. That's right up my alley uh, by wet city brewing. It's a great name of a brewery wet city. Um, heavy dose of peach and a bit of plum cinnamon on the finish three and three quarter caps for that beer. John WC, you're getting some uh, tasty beers. The Zombie Ice by Three Floyds Brewing at the Winking Lizard Tavern. Zesty, mildly syrup, orange marmalade with a decent pine and slight alcohol burn. Lovely that's the description. Ice. Yeah, that's that's the, ice. the ice version of the zombie. Yeah. Uh, three and three quarter caps for that beer. Mr. Mark Church drinking a frosted sugar cookie by Southern Tier Brewing Company. Sweet oh. and a lot of vanilla. Good for one, but don't think I could drink two. <laughs> no, uh, no notes on that one. There's no way I'd be able to drink one or two. <laughs> yeah, it sounds too sweet for me. I uh, can't believe I'm saying that now. Look what you've done to me, Denny. But I did, but I did oh, drink all of this great good beer. Good for you. Uh, come on. I still got work to do. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, Jeff Seiler drinking a Gangster Frog IPA by Hoppin' Frog Brewery. Glad to Gangster see they're Frog. making it down to uh, down to North Carolina. He said, "Big yummy West Coast IPA." Hang on, let me take a drink of this real quick. I do enjoy Hoppin' Frog. Yeah, me too. Citrusy and hoppy. Love me some Hoppin' Frog. And Monty Python's John Cleese from the Ministry oh. of Silly Walks. Classic comedy. Cheers. I, I do I do enjoy John Cleese as well. Yeah, John Cleese is great. Anything Monty Python is usually good in my book too. Um, but four cap rating on that one. And you and I were both tagged in that one. Hopefully you read it as well. I did. Chad, and, Chad Lamasa also told him awesome clock too. And I toasted. <laughs> which it is. It's a great clock. Jeff's got some of the coolest stuff ever. His Christmas ornaments, you know, Hans Gruber's falling. That's a Christmas ornament so, that he has. Like so, um, like when we went to to, I, I think I mentioned in the last episode, we went to my daughter for President's Day, and we drove there mm-hmm. and back. It's three hours each way, and uh, we caught up on the podcast. So I don't, you know, I listen to the podcast when my wife Sarah's in the car, and she, that's the only time I can get her to listen to podcasts is when we're traveling or whatever. And so we got through a, a few and, and uh, she had some good laughs over the, <laughs> the, the comments that we had with the Christmas tree, you know, getting rid of the Christmas tree and, uh, and, and what is it, you know, how do you set up a Christmas tree for a tip mouse and whatever uh, you yeah. said? Yeah. How- and then when he, the response and she was cracked up laughing, of course, <laughs> that's the way you do it. <laughs> You just throw it in the woods. Just throw it in the so, woods. Just like leave it that, the tree. Yeah, it's just like that scene from uh, Happy Gilmore when he's about to throw his club in the woods and he goes, I'm just trying to send it back to its original home. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. how you do it. Well, um, oh, I have to read this check-in from Jeff Seiler. It's the Mighty Mighty Hop Tones by Vitamin yes. C Brewing. Big Bad West Coast Double IPA. Takes me back to the hops arms race <laughs> from the good old days. <laughs> That's the impression that I get. Yeah, well, it's an appropriate uh, line you have there for a beer called the Mighty Mighty Hop Tones, which was a collab from Microphone Brewing. Oh, he gave this one yeah. four and a quarter caps. And I love the sign that he has, excuse me, next to his beer. Dogs welcome, people tolerated. Yes. I feel like <laughs> I need that in our facility. Um. Chad also said, I'm a sucker for music themed beer. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Chad is also checking into a French toast Joe by Heist Brewery. Nice dark roast coffee, lots of cinnamon, and a touch too maple syrup. Oh, a touch too much maple syrup, which makes it a little sweeter than I'd like. Also, a little bit boozy. All in all, though, I'm enjoying it. Four and a quarter caps for that one. Um, ooh, I would be interested in seeing what this tastes like. John WC is drinking a 2007. Oh, wow. Bigfoot Damn. from Sierra Nevada. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I don't have any, I only have a Bigfoot age for one year so far. <laughs> yeah. I just can't hold on to him. I, I want to Well, those. I buy a six pack and I think, okay, now again, Bigfoot's not my favorite barley wine. I don't like drinking it fresh. Mm-hmm. I know I'm a heathen. I like it better when it mellows out a little bit. So I like to let it age. But you know what? I'm a freaking sucker because if the beer is in my fridge, I'll say, oh, it's aged a couple months. Let me see how it tastes now before it's you know it's a couple the months. The whole damn six pack <laughs> is gone before I even get to the age of a year. And because I'm a sucker thinking that maybe it's already changed. Guess what? Bigfoot does not change mm. in a year, let alone in a few months. So, okay. Yeah. I'm a bad, bad. You're a bad boy. ager. Yeah. yeah. But he said it's still pretty boozy slash syrupy and a big figgy raisin and resinous Ooh. piney. So that actually oh. sounds good because that brings out more of those barley wine flavors that get masked over, in my opinion, mm-hmm. by all that big freaking hop character it has in it i mean i know it's an american ip or barley wine but it's a little much for me he said this was an awesome find and great to see yeah especially a beer that's what 15 years old. 15 years old 14 years old something like that 
yeah, 15, 14. That's a, that's a long time for that yeah. beer to be aged. <laughs> I mean, even being drinkable is good at that point. Yeah. I'd well, be curious good about on that. you. Good on you. Um, Skinny Matt Knight is drinking a vanilla porter by Rohrbach Brewing Company. Uh, he said it's a Rochester classic, four and a quarter caps for that rating. Drinking it out of a uh, Howard Hanna Real Estate Services glass. Yeah, shout out to Kevin Argauer <laughs> from Rochester. You had that one yet, Kevin? They're Kevin, watching us on the Kev, big screen. Right Kevin now. Argauer is not from Rochester, is he? Yeah, he is. Don't diss me, man. I know my peeps. All right. Kevin, chime in. Amanda, chime in. Let me know. Let them know I'm right. Ooh. Or wrong. <laughs> well, he's, here's either either way. <laughs> Even if you're right or you're wrong, if they say something, it's more engagement with the uh, with, That's right. with the live feed. Um, if you guys also would be so kind as to share this on your feed, we would very much appreciate it. Um, so let's see what happens when we refresh this. If anybody else had oh, anything else, we're at the end. We're at the end. Guess what time it is? Come on, is there any more? Look at this special beer we're holding. Eric Gronley is drinking a barrel aged narwhal <laughs> by Sierra Nevada Brewing Company. Sorry if we <laughs> ruined it for you. <laughs> he said a bucket list beer. So many good things going on. Rich chocolate bourbon flavor. Never saw it coming. Thanks, Jeff S. Four and a half cap rating for that one. And that is what everybody is drinking. Is there a, I wonder if there's an a year on this can if i could check it in for 2023 well you should be able to check it in for 2021 <laughs> yeah but i don't know if it's i don't see a name a, a year on here so i do it's on the bottom of the can yeah but i don't want to get in trouble and have another 400 beers uh you know marked off of my uh unique list yeah well you you tend you to know how i roll I need to go okay. get a napkin, though. Okay. You, you I, spilled? I spilled. Okay. Well, while beer. you get a napkin, let me go ahead and introduce our next beer tasting provided by our listener in Minnesota. Minnesota, 11.9% beer talking. Eric Gronley. He provided us with this beer. Shales Snowstorm Mahogany Lager. And I found it very interesting to um, do a little research on here because I have never heard of shells. But you know what? These guys have been around for a long, long time. They made it through prohibition and they're, you know, and then kept brewing beer after prohibition ended. And then, er, you know, early into the craft beer scene, dove into craft beer in the Minnesota, you know, Minnesota area and was one of the first craft breweries in minnesota which is fantastic how have i never heard of shells well guess what i've heard of them now and i'm going to try one of their beers provided by eric gromley second oldest yes. family-owned brewery in america now hang on for me one second okay so, is, good job way to go wow okay why don't you just chug that thing i did <laughs> like a champion <laughs> Okay, so this is Shell's Snowstorm Mahogany Lager, out, and this is the brewery out of New Ulm, Minnesota. 6.7% lager. Holy smokes. Why the hell not? Yeah. I don't that's have to go big, to work tomorrow. That's a, that's yes, a big lager. Uh, 25 IBUs. I'm going to go ahead and, you know, uh, three three 3.75 caps on untapped with over 731 ratings. Now, this is... Um, an offshoot of their regular uh, snowstorm lager. I mean, I, I looked on there; they had a few different versions of of this of this beer, but this is the mahogany lager version, which has only been released, I think, recently. That's why there's not that many. Uh, but oh, look at you! You cleaned your glass. Let's do it. Okay. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and pour this beer. I'm going to go ahead and crack this open. Oh yeah, that sounded good, didn't it? Oh yeah. I'm going to pour it into my lager glass, B cup, my lager B cup. Oh, shit. And look at you foaming up, man. You unprofessional pour. It's okay. 
it's okay i'm i'm trying not to foam mine up but it wants to foam beautiful looking beer really dense head deep, too deep amber copper almost copperish color <clears throat> eric said fun fact snowstorm is a different beer style every year oh just like minnesota snowstorms oh thank you for that fact eric okay so this beer opaque you cannot see through it uh, but i beg to differ with you this is translucent <clears throat> i can't see anything. opaque means beer? no uh, opaque means zero light goes through it translucent is some light goes through <laughs> it but you just can't see through it and transparent is okay. totally clear okay maybe they're third grade science stuck with me okay. my friend i promise all right well I will say you're right. It's not completely opaque. It is semi-translucent <laughs> <laughs> or semi-opaque, whatever you want to call it. But uh, but it is a nice mahogany color. Nice mahogany color. It and is it a has, very pretty color. Uh, uh, one, look at that, one finger head, one mm -hmm. finger head, two fingers for Chris. Two fingers because I like it hard. Uh <laughs> <laughs> oh, tried not to laugh so hard it, oh, uh, it just uh, came out <laughs> anyway but uh, uh it has a um uh, uh i it's it's over off white it's more like a, a light beige head coarse and fine bubbles looks creamy wow the aroma is very surprising there is hints of fruit in this head, which surprises me because this is a lager. I should get like a lot of bready dough, doughy notes, cracker notes, some kind of bread crust notes. And although I do have some of the hints in there, I'm getting a, gosh, almost like a, wow, what's the aroma I'm getting off of that? I don't know. There's still too much head in my glass. Wow. It smells really good, but I'm getting smoke. No, no, no smoke. It's like a fruit. It's, it's kind of fruity, but I can't pinpoint the fruity character. That yeah, smells good though. I don't know what I, I got it. Mom. <laughs> it's called a belgian dip actually you know you know what you, you just said Bel it smells belgiany it's got like almost a belgian double character i was trying to make it make an austin powers reference and i nailed it right on the head like no, no no but it does it kind of reminds me of a, of a belgian double smells good okay are you ready to take a sip of this? Let's, yeah. let's take a sip. Okay, more. Wow, this is That's really phenomenal. good. This is this is full of flavor. I'm getting in the back of my cheeks. I'm getting uh I'm getting a spicy note of almost like rye, but it's not rye. It's like a wow. It's like a mm. Mm. Wow, this is super flavorful and really good. And I can't, it's so, it's got a complex flavor. It's not a one trick pony lager for sure. I love the uh, description that they have on untapped for it though. It says this year's snowstorm is a menagerie of specialty grains with notes of sweet bread and spice. It smells of rich mahogany and is best enjoyed surrounded by many leather bound books. And you know what? 
drinking this into in a in an old musty uh cabin how that yeah. mansion uh library oh i should hold it about appropriately right, right? then just yes i i am struggling to put profile but the, characters but they're her. they're earthy though it's almost like the mahogany it's got some woodiness to it too i will agree with woodiness i think that is a good word wordy woodiness i can't i don't know what mahogany tastes like so i can't really say if it tastes like mahogany <laughs> i'm gonna say it does you're right woody it has a woody character it has it has a spicy character but it's not but i'm i'm having trouble pinpointing the flavor of that of what it's, it's producing there is a slight fruity sweetness there's a slight there's a slight sweetness on the nose reminds me of maybe prunish but i can't say it's prunes because it's mm. not it's not super strong in that but it's got some kind of a subtle you know, aftermath of after you eat some prunes, you have that aftermath of sweetness that can be, that's kind of like the prune sweetness left in your, in your mouth after eating prunes. It's almost like, it's almost like tobacco. Or I might, I might, I might agree with the tobacco. Maybe there is some tobacco character in here. Or something like that, right? Something that's been laid out to dry, maybe dried leather. Maybe that's maybe it is. They they mentioned leather and maybe elk hide. Like, <laughs> elk, yeah, maybe elk hide. Yeah, maybe <laughs> something like that. Something something laid out to dry. Um, no, but like le- talking about, you should enjoy it around you know lots of leather bound books. Like it's it's got it does it. I I still am getting some smokiness to it. Not I'm not like smokiness. not like smoke. Uh, like smoked meat smokiness but like fireplace um tobacco leather books if i was sitting in a i don't even know how to explain it but like just sitting in a, a cabin during a snowstorm um with a roaring fire in a comfy chair Surrounded by leather bound books, this that this would do it. What's interesting too, there is a slight um it okay. I, I'm not gonna say bitterness, but it finishes more drier than I was I would think, which lends me to come up with like a, a bitter finish versus a sweet finish right cool yeah i'm having trouble uh characterizing this beer but it's great i will say yeah. and that's what's so great about it is that it is unlike anything else i've ever had i cannot name a beer that i've had that is similar to this Heck, how about you chris can you remember can you can you can you call out a beer that tastes anything like this? Not even close. Yeah, this is so unique and so. I mean, I'm I'm we're, I I'm speechless. I can't even. Uh, I can't. I don't know. I I love this beer, and it's just a mahogany lager. <laughs> I don't even know. Is this is a lager. As I'm sitting here googling, what does mahogany taste like? <laughs> okay, what does it taste like? Um, Maybe that's what that, we're tasting. First thing that popped up. Um, the fruit contains uh, uh so this apparently there's mahogany trees bear edible fruit so i don't know that's that seems weird um i mean maybe we can say there's some some date sweetness in it maybe i mean i'm trying to think of things i can relate to what i'm tasting and maybe dates Dates might be, uh, you know, I I do eat a lot of dates, so that kind of uh, reminds me of some of the date uh, 
syrupy, although it's not syrupy beer, but like date syrup character. Um, and it's not a sweet, like it has some sweetness to it, but it also has some, I, I'm still stuck on it's just kind of woodsy. Woodsy, yeah. I'll say maybe it is like a woody, a woody character. I can't say nutty, mm-hmm. not nutty. I can't, I mean, I can't use other things. Wo- woody, I, I can agree with woody. I can agree with with date, date syrup soaked wood. <laughs> That's, that's the uh that's the line of the day date date syrup okay yeah okay date, okay syrup, so syrup. let me i'm i i can't explain it um but this beer is fantastic uh i mean right off the bat I, i'm gonna say i'm gonna rate this probably a four and a half cap rating um just because it's it's good i can drink more than one mm-hmm it stumped me. I can't even think of the flavors. It's it's layered, rich, complex, and great. And I and I've never had a beer like it. That's what's fantastic about it. Um, and here's what that says on the side of the can: Every Midwesterner knows no two snowstorms are alike. So we change it up every year. That's what Eric said, because it showcases our ability to adapt to the times. Back in the olden days. It was no small feat to take our beer by wagon to the local establishments, especially in the dead of winter. We had to find in- inventive ways to make sure the beer arrived and our patrons didn't run the well dry. This meant long hauls and even leaving beer unattended at the bottom of the hills when it was too heavy for the horses to make it up in one trip. Wow. And Eric has some comments of his own. He says, you're going to, you're going to get a great lager with shell. I would love to come on the show when you guys get to the S beers and talk about shell and Surly and maybe Minnesota craft beer history. This beer is dark and bready, light coffee flavor too. Coffee flavor. I don't get coffee in here. I don't think I get coffee in here. Do you get coffee in this? Maybe a very light roasted coffee. Like a blonde coffee. Maybe. If I really think about it. You mean if you really let your brain think, make you think you're tasting coffee? Yeah. (laughs) It might. There might be some coffee in there, but it's great. And you know what, Eric? Uh, When we do our favorite S breweries we're gonna have you on to talk about your favorite s breweries in minnesota and we'd love to hear about shell okay chris i'm burping up some beer let's end this great beer tasting uh thank you eric for providing the beer a beer that's left us speechless yeah we we can't describe it really good beer not many things in life that do that for us but yeah you know, there's a, uh, there's opportunity in time when <laughs> things can make us speechless. That's uh, pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I thought this show was going to be short. I didn't say that at, be- at the beginning, but you know what? We're going to make this an hour and a half at least. Okay. Uh, but now it's time for the brew buzz. Brew buzz is the vote of discussing various related topics. This week, we discuss how relevant are beer festivals and do we need them? And if so, yes. How can we bring more value to the consumer? It's the consumer. And uh, Chris, <clears throat> I, 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 I put some points in here for you to jump in and, and, and talk, but this is kind of me on a soapbox. Beer, beer oh, box. Christ. Okay. No, because this is, a, <laughs> I'm going to talk about something that happened uh, on social media. And, and it, since it happened to me, Who's better to talk about it than the person it happened to, right? So like many of the other topics that we discussed in the show, I was inspired by an article that I read last week. The article is called Successful Beer Fest and uh, Have to Be More Than About Beer. And it was written by uh, Jeff Allsworth, who's the, uh, you know, the writer, famous book writer, uh, the, 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 uh, the Beer Bible, 
versions one and two, uh, as well as he does uh, a beer blog called Beer Birvana Blog. And he is also one of the hosts of the Birvana podcast. I listen to him every episode they have. I enjoy, uh, you know, their their content, and and I I do go to his blog every so often and read the articles, but I don't you know peruse it looking for new stuff every day. But I thought it would be fun to relay how a Twitter response on this topic got completely misinterpreted and generated some troll, some hmm. Twitter troll hate. Whew, yes, yes, I, I got some troll. I got some troll hate. And uh, so let me start off with how this whole thing got started. So Jeff Allworth, he posted a tweet with a link to his article on his to on an article to his uh, Bruvana blog as follows. This is what he said in his tweet. Why are some fests dying or dead while Fort George's Beer Festival of the Dark Arts was the hottest ticket around a week after the event? I look at what makes a successful fest and how others might use it as a blueprint for success. So I went and read the article. I, I enjoyed the article. I understand the points he was making, but I had some other insight on my opinion on maybe why people aren't necessarily attending beer fests as much as they were back in the past. So here is, and again, keep in mind, that this response was made on Twitter. And anyone that's not familiar with Twitter, Twitter is a social media platform that people can post stuff and people can comment on, but you're limited to a certain number of characters in your response. So being a, you know, a conscientious uh, Twitter responder, I made sure I made my response within the limits of a single response, which is a small amount of characters so like 240 characters 40 something, something like yeah and so i didn't just like write a bunch i can't write a long dissertation on my response so i made it concise and here is what i wrote when craft beer was not as available beer fests were great to experience the beer it was worth the extra cost now fests serve beer readily available not special and at a high price and in an oversold space with people serving not from the brewery people don't need them anymore in my opinion and that's exactly what i wrote word for word in the thing i kept it within exactly the amount i think i had zero characters left um and i wasn't able to you know i didn't want to expound more on it i just kind of gave my opinion again my opinion based off of why i think beer fests are not are starting to fail and and close up shop right Again, that was written in his article about how there's several big brew, brew fests that in Oregon, especially that were very, uh, you know, I mean, besides Great American Beer Fest, the Oregon Brewers Beer Festival was like the biggest beer festival in the States, how it's considering not continuing, closing down, not having any more fests. Well, that's a big loss, right? If, if the second biggest beer festival in the States gives up doing a beer fest, there's a problem, right? What's that problem? That's what I wrote about. So then kindly, Jeff, you know, he liked my response. He didn't make any comments to it. He just put a like that he appreciated that I responded. And I thought that was that. that that's it. That's what I thought. Well, guess what? Um, it wasn't the end of that thought. Mm. Um, I typically do not respond to twit from tweets with people that have a lot of followers, a big following, because I don't like dealing with these Twitter trolls. I, I don't like trolling. I don't troll people on Twitter. I don't like being trolled. I'm not going to respond to a troll. I'm just going to let it go. And I'll use my own platform to talk about what the real content is. And that's what we're doing tonight. Yeah. So Chris, why don't you go ahead and, uh, and read uh about you know what the troll has to say yeah well i don't like listening to uh troll twits either <laughs> <clears throat> but uh <clears throat> excuse me the troll responds with several tweets as follows this is one of two now fest serves serve beer readily available then you're attending the wrong fests 
lots of generalizing going on in your comment. Did you try one or two and then decide this? Foda. What's Foda? That's the uh, Festival of Dark Arts. Okay. Uh, Festival of Dark Arts does not sell beers that are readily available. Many are not even distributed around here. I yeah. So, so let me just make a comment. I wasn't speaking to the Festival of Dark Arts or the, the festivals that are doing it right, right? That's what Jeff was saying is, hey, this festival is doing something different, doing it right. And I wasn't responding to that. I was responding to the reason why people aren't attending other festivals. And, and uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I, and, and he doesn't know me from anyone. He was just, you know, know, he just took offense to what I had to say and wanted to jump in, but I've been to many, many different beer festivals for the last 20, 30 years. I've been to beer festivals. I've gone to good beer festivals. I enjoy good beer festivals. I'm just saying that, you know, my comments are based off of what my opinion on what has changed over the years, why people may not want to attend them. Okay. Continue on to number two. I love a good, um, I love a good troll, Demi. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Um, especially when it's just people that are just kind of, you know, trying to basically stir the kettle. Kind yeah. Of thing. Um, so number the second one, uh, saying this cat, I can, God, I can just hear him in my head. <laughs> Thank, saying this categorically, any blanket statement like this made about anything from beer fest to spelling bees <laughs> is ridiculous. It seeks to homogenize. God, who is that? I want to find yeah. out who I want to know this person and I want to <laughs> just go have fun with them, not and, and torment them. I want to torment the troll. It seeks to homogenize all human experience. And I'm sorry if you feel that way, but you do not speak for, quote, people. You speak for you only. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then Jeff decides to respond. And dude, you were the king of blanket statements. Pot and kettle. Yeah. So, I mean, even Jeff's is like, dude, man. You you're like just made a bunch of blanket statements and and and, and look so okay so yeah I just thought that I thought that was funny. Well, troll got hurt feelings and began defending and needed to lash out further. That's what I love about trolls. You yeah. can just <laughs> egg them on just a little bit more. Neither I have no reason to retract the idea that any statement that purports to cover all of any subject is absurd. Jesus, can we use some more? Mm. They, I wasn't even part of this conversation. I just want to smack this guy in the head with my keyboard. Um, uh, statement that purports to cover all of any subject is absurd. He said, quote, people don't need them anymore, end quote. Really? Hard to imagine why all those folks show up for FOTA and GABF then if we don't need them. The idea of writing something like that guy did is foreign to me. Yeah, so are friends, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> saying that all fests serve beer readily available, not special, is idiotic and far more of a statement on his lack of experience with fests than the fests themselves. Defense of that comment is futile futile uh, yeah. it's futile yeah now, yeah now never nothing in my words that i said all i didn't say all everything all it is all encompassing i did i just made yeah whatever okay so now let me go ahead and exp now that i have the platform where i can properly explain what i meant in that small little twitter comment uh and, and, and this is, this is, this, is, I want to bring conversation with our listeners. I want to hear about your experiences, what you like, dislike, or whether or not I'm totally full of crap, or if I have something to stand on. Again, this is my opinion. And, and this is my opinion and why I have stepped back from my beer fest attendance in the last, well, besides COVID, but even before COVID, 
I stepped back from going to beer fest that I just felt I w- wasn't getting my money's worth. My value, the, the value I was gaining out of the cost was not equal or even beneficial. It was at a negative. And I don't like to do things at a negative. So here's my explanation. In the past, let's say back in 1995 to 2010, craft beer was not easy to get. You were lucky if you had a craft brewery or two in your town and extremely lucky if you could find their beer packaged for consumption outside the brewery. Getting beer from other breweries outside your area was also also difficult. There was a need to bring these beers in keg form to one place for many people to try. Welcome to the beer festival. In the early days, people would pay a fixed fee to get into a festival, receive a tasting glass, and this tasting glass, keep in mind, was often a 10-ounce globe glass, not like a small little tasting. This was like a full glass globe, and we were allowed to taste beers. There were anywhere from 15 to 40 breweries represented, serving at least one, if not two beers. The brewers or owners would be the ones serving the beers and take talking to the visitors. They were selling their beer and brand to try to get the word out there. The cost was around $30 to $40, but you were experiencing beers from breweries you otherwise would have to travel to to enjoy. The cost versus value was there, especially if you end up consuming six to 10 pints worth of beer over the course of the day. Again, you're not getting full 10 ounce pours. You're getting a smaller amount, but you're getting a full size glass, filling it halfway and you're able to experience a lot of these beers, you would never have had a chance to experience in your local area. That was what was beneficial about going to Beer Fest early on. Now, let's move forward to around 2010. Beer Festival started adding other activities along with beer and, uh, and started selling entry into the festival with a limited number of tasting tickets included. Now, I know this isn't widespread around the entire nation but in my area in the western states this is what i was seeing i was seeing that now they're bringing bands they're bringing comedians they're bringing art festival activities they're bringing other things into this venue selling you a price to get in and with that price to get in you're getting a certain number you're getting a tasting glass and a certain number of tickets to go try beers and you can buy extra tickets to go ahead and continue drinking beer if you want. And um, so this allowed people to come and enjoy the beer and activities. The tasting glasses shrank from that 10 ounce globe down to a five ounce size glass and tickets cost around $2.50 each. That equates to about $7.50 per pint of beer. The cost did go up, but now the visitor had access to other activities and we're still getting unique beer. So the value is still there, right? You're, you're, you're paying, you're getting the beer, but you're paying for this stuff. And it's, 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 you know, it's fun. Now, after about, after 2011, the craft beer market started increasing exponentially. The craft beer boom happened, right? Now more and more breweries are opening up in towns. You can get a lot more beer and a lot different beer. Uh, you know, regional beers started coming in, you started getting a lot more access to beer. Um, More and more craft breweries were opening up and people were exposed to a lot of new beers. The craft brewery started in the late 80s and 90s started distributing further and further out of their home region. Beer Fest were still a fun event because there were so many new breweries and beers that we were always subjected to new, new stuff, right? Now comes to the point where I begin to state my points from the tweet. So that was all when things were still good. We started to move into a huge growth in craft beer. Craft beer is more readily available to the consumer. Now I make my comments where I started to see things start to degrade. Around 2016, beer festivals I attended began to swap the value versus cost. Now, the value was not balancing out the cost. Beer festivals I attended annually started reducing the reach to other breweries, or they would pour beers from the brewery that were available on draft or in package in the area, while the prices per tickets increased to about $4.50 to $5 per four to five ounce pour. That's huge. 
you're paying as much for a quarter of the beer that you'd pay for a pint of the beer normally at a beer festival. Where's the value in that? If you're not getting things that are very unique and, and that's what I was meaning by, you know, by my, by my statements. Now that's 13, 50 to $15 per pint of beer for beers that we we can grab at the supermarket. And I'm not even kidding. These are beers that I could just go to the damn supermarket and pick a six pack up for the price for, for half the price of what I pay for a four to five ounce taster. That, that is the value that I'm talking about. Also, these venues would oversell the capacity and you found yourself waiting 15 to 30 minutes to get a pour. And then you're crammed together like sardines while you try to enjoy the beer and visit with your friends, getting bumped, your beer dripped and all that, all the crap, right? Oh yeah. And now the beers are being served by festival volunteers. Go ahead and ask your server about a beer and don't be surprised if you hear that they either never never tr- tried it or they don't like the style of beer. Yeah. What is worse than going and getting a beer, asking the person to serve you a beer and not getting any feedback about the beer and having it tell you, oh, I don't like the style, so I don't know anything about it. That's BS. And that is what I started experiencing around 2016 and on is that it took away that personal touch. That hey, brewer. That, real quick, Denny. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and this is just the most random thing ever. Jeff Seiler, if you are still listening, I think you just got hacked on Facebook because I just got a random message from you on uh, on Messenger. It says, I think you're in this video. Uh-oh. If you got anything from Jeff, don't click on it. Okay. Jeff, change your password. <clears throat> Sorry, Jeff. Man, what is up with these, these people hacking? Sorry, these- I didn't mean to just completely derail you there, but... <laughs> no, no. So, So that was my... You know, that that is what kind of sours me on the modern beer festival. Am I saying this is every single beer festival out there? No, I'm not saying this is every single beer festival. I'm saying this as a generality that a lot of the beer festivals, even the ones that I attended annually every year, I stopped attending because I just felt it was just a money grab. You know, mm. I, I, I didn't like being treated like just another sucker coming in and paying your money and and not getting the benefit that i thought that we should get so did i make broad and overextended comments using the word people in quotes yes i was speaking for myself but also stating that if a if beer festivals are failing and quitting then the reasons i stated might be part of that cause i wasn't saying nobody needs beer festivals i was providing my experiences to suggest why quote people may not be into them as much as they were in the past and that was the meat of what my comment was was just providing my input on why people people in general might not be attending beer festivals as much as they were and why beer festivals are starting to fail and and stop you know um putting them on so, uh, Chris, that, I've gotten off my soapbox. Um, I wrote down a few things. And, of course, add whatever you want, Chris, uh, okay. to, 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 to this. But these are how I think, uh, you know, th- some ways that we can make uh, beer festivals more relevant again and get more consumers to want to go and participate. Well, before I do that, and, and Denny, while you were on your soapbox, Sorry, my ADD kicked in and Mm -hmm. I was doing a couple other things, but I just wanted to give a big shout out to uh, Brendan O'Leary and uh, Steve Moore over at True Respite Brewing. Uh, I was having a little chat with them on potentially getting some (laughs) merchandise. Oh, okay. And I said to him, um, I told him we are currently live on Facebook. And I said to him, like, guys, it's 10 p.m. How is it that I'm, aren't you guys closed? How is it that you're still chatting with me? uh on freaking facebook messenger and they're like oh um that's the blessing and the curse of owning a business and uh you know i'm currently one of the guys said hey i'm currently cuddling on the couch with my with my dog watching (laughs) yellowstone and the other guy was like i'm cuddling with my dog reading an old tom clancy novel so wow i just tagged them in our uh our show post here um and i i did just say hey 
guys want to chat maybe in a future episode but hey yeah. um back to the conversation so cheers to those guys i <laughs> i love their their can art that's that's one of the reasons and chad lamasa is another one who uh reaches out or has posted a lot of their stuff on like untap with their can art so how do you make some beer festivals relevant again well uh collaborate with breweries outside of your area to bring great beer to the festival now my the most recent what, what was the most recent festival you've been to denny uh well i haven't been, been a couple years or what yeah not since before covid okay so the most recent one that i went to was uh badass beer fest with tampa bay brewing company so that was back in november and if you guys don't know i'm in florida so we said mm. f covid we just don't care <laughs> um so when it came down to it, it that's exactly what they did it wasn't just tampa bay breweries yeah there were plenty of tampa you know tampa breweries but we had breweries from out in orlando i know we had a couple from jacksonville but man we had there were breweries from there at, at that festival from north dakota yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, Drecker was there um, and, and they did. They did exactly that. They collaborate with breweries outside the area to bring great beer to the festival. The second thing was insist the breweries have ownership in their booth by having their team pour the beers. Yeah. I 100 percent agree with that because, well, I pretty much just did that as I'm chatting with the guys at true respite, right? Like, mm -hmm. Hey, if you can communicate with the owners or the brewers of that place, they're going to be so much more involved instead of having just, uh, you got some, you know, some volunteers there doing it. That's, that's cool. But it's funny because Denny, as I was signing on with you earlier, I was literally sending an email to somebody going, Hey, you got any volunteer spots for this beer festival you got coming up? <laughs> um, because, you know, we want to help out too. So it's, you know, it's our craft beer community. Um, the third thing, if the venue is small, offer two sessions, keep beers in the attendees' glasses. Don't bring yeah. them something huge. Like we drank this freaking Norwal at almost 12%. Yeah, put, put that in a five ounce tasting glass on the 20, 30, 40 spots that you can go pick, uh, pick to have a sampler from. And everybody's just hammered and dumb <laughs> and, you know, stumbling all over the place. It's going to be fun if you do it right. Mm -hmm. But it kind of takes away from the, the idea of, well, I want to try these beers. I want to interact with these breweries. I want to find out, okay, well, why did you guys brew your beer this way? Why did you guys use this ingredient? Why do you like, mm -hmm. you know, to brew the way that you brew? Like, I, I like the that the people can do that. So having the team there to do it mm -hmm. makes it that much better. And, yeah. and I remember one, not the a beer fest that I attended a couple of years ago. Um, oh, it was a badass beer fest again <laughs> uh, a couple of years ago, and they had uh, a brewery called Urban South, which is based out of New Orleans in Louisiana, and they had two people there from new orleans yeah, not just yeah. volunteers no i remember you mentioned them yeah yeah and it was just not only fun to get to know them and you know chat with them a little bit but it was it was really cool just to have people that were in the area you know you go somewhere else to pour beer you can pour beer anywhere but if you pour beer somewhere that's different it's a whole new interaction with a whole new client mm -hmm. that well if you're able to distribute in that area can be a new customer for you, which is, is always good too. So yeah, um, that we completely derailed that part of the conversation, but you know, if the venue's small, <laughs> offer some sessionable beers to, you know, keep people drinking the beers and, you know, not just getting everybody, you know, shit faced, um, creative festivals, all things like all dark beer or all fresh hop. Like I had always liked hearing you say the, what was the beer fest, the fresh, Hop, the fresh, fresh hoppable yeah fresh the, hop the, yeah one. and 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 actually that was the last one i went to during covid because i remember i had to go back and get my uh vaccine card to come back to the so we had to drive all of that home and then come back to be able to uh get in because they required you to show your vaccine card to get in so that was the last last one i went to okay yeah and that's 
that's great to be able to uh to have the i i always love the name or you got you and john always went to the um great the, the, the great pumpkin, pumpkin beer festival, beer festival yeah. right um or the the all ipa all sour blind tasting seasonal beers bring back voting for best beer um and we just had that here with uh the uh tampa bay beer week they had the best florida beer championship mm-hmm uh, the brewer. So, and these are just things that coming off the top of my head, the brewer's ball is, these are all things that are mm-hmm. here in Tampa that we, we do a lot of here. Um, and they are, they are those, uh, the voting for best beers of the fest, kind of like our little own version of GABF. Mm-hmm. Um, and then offer more inclusive festivals. Now, Denny, what do you mean by more inclusive festivals? Well, well where inclusive? you pay one, like the Badass Beer Festival, you pay one fee, you get in, and you don't need tickets. You just go drink whatever you want. Okay. But those in our area have gone by, right? They, they Everything's by a ticket. Yeah. And these tickets are, like I said, $5 a piece for a four to five ounce pour. You know, maybe provide some of these festivals that you're, you're going to pay a little bit higher price, but you're going to be able to get in there and, and get these good beers uh, with, you know, without uh, having to worry about how many tickets you have left. Um, yeah. And that, that's a tough part too, is whether you're like, well, I want to save my tickets yeah. so you can get the beers you want, or is it, you just get whatever you want. I, I'll admit I've gone through and I've gone through those all in, all inclusive festivals and go, okay, well just, just fill my, you know, put like a couple ounces in there yeah. because I don't want, I want to try the beer, but I just don't want to, I don't want all well, this extra beer too. And that's the key is, is if people just try it with a small amount, instead of getting a half pour and then throwing it out, I don't like watching people dump their beer into the trash can because they want to go to the next thing. That's why I, I typically don't like mm-hmm. the the one price get all because a lot of beer is wasted i don't like wasting beer yeah you know if you pay if you have a ticket and you're paying it most likely even if you don't like it you're going to drink it because you don't want to go buy another ticket right. so i mean that's why those are uh, you know the beers last a little bit longer with with those style um i will say um i mentioned the blind tasting festival there was a festival i went to every year they had it for three years I think before they stopped it at, at Tin Barrel, which was the uh, the it was called the Beer Wars, and it was basically IPA Beer Wars, and all the you know they did have thirty or forty beers, and you didn't know what you're getting, and you show up at the beer festival for the first four or five hours. I can't remember how long it was. All the taps were numbered, and you would just you take your tickets. You had to buy tickets. And you would go and say, you know what? I'm going to try tap number three mm. and you'd pour it and drink it. And then you'd had, you had these, uh, these tokens that you would then vote for, which was your favorite IPA of, of the tastings that you did. And it was fun. Yeah. Now, did I get some bad beers that I didn't like? Yeah. But you never know is it's a, it's a total blind tasting and you might get a bad a beer that you're like don't care for but you might get a beer that you really enjoy and you vote for it at the and then about halfway or you know several hours into it they go ahead and they they tally up all the votes and then they release what beers are which and then people can go and buy the beers they want if they don't know what the you know beer is but i thought it was fantastic i love that blind tasting event two dollars and fifty cents per pour not bad for trying a beer that uh, that you may or may not have ever had before. And then at the end, I would write down which beers I had on my list. And then the next day, I would look and find out which beers they were and how I rated them, my, you know, so I could add them into Untapped the next day. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, those, I mean, those are fun types of festivals that bring interest into people coming and enjoying it, right? Yeah. All right, I'll just finish this off, Chris. This is my statement. I believe the okay. Fort George Beer Festival of Dark Arts and the Tampa Bay Brewing Company Badass Beer Fest are two examples of beer festivals doing fests differently and providing value to their visitor. We heard from Dave Doble. He wanted people to come to his beer festival to enjoy 
the beer. He brought beers in from around the country that were special. He forced the brewers to show up the day before, made him stay in the hotel, come to the parties, and serve their beer at the festival because he wanted ownership in that festival. He says, I don't, you know, after the first festival we had where he had music and found out that people were just coming in and, and, watch, and, and watching yeah. the band, he said, you know what? No more bands. This is about the beer. Yep. And those are those, that's the commitment that we need to have in these beer festivals. Put on a beer festival that showcases the beer, bring in styles, breweries, things that people can't get in that area, make it special again. I've said it before, the Pay at Brewing, I'm going to call them out, the Pay at Brewing Black Friday Beer Festival. I went to that festival from the first year they had it until about three years ago, every year, annually for six years, until I got tired of them changing the festival from getting unique beers from around the nation that I couldn't get to being that now I've got 25 pay up beers and a few handful of other beers around that are not special. Yeah. And I stopped going. I don't want to pay $4.50 for a taster of a beer, like I said, that I can get in town or at the brewery. That's not special to me. And that's, you know, that's, that's just one example. Also the fresh hop beer festival. I went to the very first one and I've gone to almost every one that they've had. And I really enjoyed it as they went, but they've, you know, they made mistakes over the years when they made it where my wife couldn't get in as a designated as driver, a driver. <laughs> and I had to pay for a full price ticket for her to get in $30 for my wife to come in with me and, and be with me. And then now I'm, I have to go ahead and suck that price up and drink the beers of her tickets. So now I'm drinking double the amount of beers that I really wanted to drink. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some people may say that's not a problem, but hey, I don't go out to beer festivals to get wasted. I go out to enjoy the beer. You know, those are problematic issues that occur. Don't put a tax on responsible drinking. That's the wrong way of handling things. They did change that after I complained two years in a row. They did make it an open, you come in for free and you just buy your tickets and, and you can, and so now it's no longer a paid event to get into. But, uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, thing, things things to change a little bit, make it a little bit special, and and that's my that's my opinion. That's that's where I was going with that uh, that tweet response that got uh, trolled by some. Uh, and this guy wasn't even a young guy. This guy was a at least my age, if not older. He says he has eleven grandchildren, so he's not a young pup, right? Oh damn! But he just is, he he likes to troll people. <clears throat> I don't know. Sounds like he just needs something better to do with his retirement. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe we, should, maybe we should have him on the show. No, well, I thought about <laughs> honestly, I almost reached out to him and says, Hey, let's talk about this on my podcast. But you know what? I don't want to even, I don't know, the, the guy just kind of put a sour feeling in me. And I just don't want to deal with people like that. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that because I thought my, my fear was we'd have him on and I'd have to like cut. I have to drop them. We have to cut. I have you like drop them out of the show, and we have mm -hmm. to, you know, have a problem. I didn't want to have a problem, but uh, but Chris, let's let's go ahead and end that that topic and go into the new and noteworthy beer. Um, I I I followed suit with you last week. I I went a week without drinking because of that head cold. Yeah. If I'm not feeling well, the first thing I do is I stop drinking because I I want to make sure my body has 100 ability to fix whatever's wrong. And plus I was all stuffed up, so I couldn't really taste that well. And I, I didn't want to, uh, you know, drink some good beers that I couldn't really enjoy. So I went a week without drinking anything, mm. which is fine. I survived. Um, and then I did have some beers, but nothing that I wanted to really talk about on the show, but you did have at least one. I had beer. one. Yeah. And it's, uh, it was, it's funny that we were talking about beer fests and just how everything is kind of, sticking together and and linking together we were talking about badass beer fest and then talking about david doble and then and then all of a sudden you know when we were chatting with dave he leaked kind of a 
oh yeah hey, this beer is coming yeah but he really didn't say anything much about it he showed the the photo and that was pretty much it um and the photo that he shared was now what was called their coral head american ipa from tampa bay brewing company and it's my new and note my one and only new and noteworthy beer okay. for for this this episode oh awesome jeff seiler said thanks chris password changed <laughs> <laughs> um so I had their their coral head. It's the American IPA and the notes that they have on it. I gave this a four cap rating. I really enjoyed this one uh, and their notes that they put on it, hitting heavy with notes of stone fruit, passion fruit and papaya with a big citrus twist, bordering the territory of tropical and straight dank. The oh. finish is lingering, mouth coating and sturdy enough to handle the hop load, allowing you to enjoy unfolding layers of tropical fruit, an ultra crisp tropical bomb backed by balanced bitterness and smooth mouthfeel. A perfect IPA for any Florida day. Nice. Yeah, I'd say it matched up to all of that and then some. So <laughs> it was it was nice to uh, just be able to. I feel like over the last couple of IPAs that I've had from those guys, they went they leaned pretty heavily on the West Coast uh notes on those and they did it very well so okay four cap rating for that one and that's my new and noteworthy uh, okay no, that's the end of that crazy. segment yeah all right well, hey chris we got one more beer to drink you ready i am okay okay yes oh, we are going to be drinking a wisconsin beer from new galera's brewing company this is care of bill slimmer one of our fantastic listeners and our virtual producers this is New Glarus's Staghorn Oktoberfest out of New Glarus, Wisconsin. 6.25% ABV, 3.79 caps out of over 40,000 ratings on Untapped. Okay. I, I don't currently, not that I'm aware of, let me open this uh, moving box, but I don't, you don't have an opener. I don't have an opener. Well, you are unprepared, sir. That's okay. I can I be am prepared. prepared. I'll go step out into the kitchen and okay. I'll go get one. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this Oktoberfest into my You pizza. do that. <laughs> I'll get this out. <laughs> While Chris goes and finds an opener, uh, the pains of moving. But you know what? Any seasoned beer drinker will have a bottle opener on their keychain, right? Come on. We always have a bottle opener in in uh in easy reach but let me read about this uh this beer this is 100 natural great midwestern and european malts the world's most expensive hops fresh yeast from germany and clear wisconsin water oh, door, a little hard <laughs> make this staghorn oktoberfest wisconsin's real red you will find absolutely no additives, preservatives, or artificial agents of any kind in this beer. Staghorn is brewed using the time-honored methods and to release the smooth flavor of their roasted malts. This Oktoberfest combines the smooth amber mm. body with a clean, crisp finish. Be sure to hold this one up to the light of any harvest moon and enjoy wisconsin's real red well i don't know if we can give you guys the harvest moon but like it's uh oh that's a beautiful shot yes that's nice you got some good i mean yours had a, the red i don't well, have any red in my office here to well i don't red. so if what i did is i have my you know awesome colored rental walls look at that, <laughs> look at that uh, Nice paint, nice there. rental wall. But we've got, yes. you know, the light there. Yeah. And we get a nice red color out of that. That is beautiful. It looks just like, I just need a stag in front of it. It looks just like this. Yeah, it would look just like the label. <laughs> All right, Chris. So um, in my glass, it's not red, but it's more amber. Um, it It is semi-translucent. I can see light through it, but I can't necessarily see through it. Uh, I've got uh, a half finger head lingering off white, um, but it's not sticking around as long as the other heads. No, it's it's mine's still sticking around, but it's it, it's almost like a struggle head. Yeah, struggle head. <laughs> the struggle is real. 
Um, it definitely this this compared to the Shell Snowstorm Mahogany Lager. This lighter. one you get you get a lot of bread crust malt character in the nose. Mm-hmm. I mean, really crusty. Like I really need to stop. Crust. I really need to stop filling my glasses so full because I. I fill it up and then I'm trying to smell it and then I, I want to swirl, but I'm trying to be so. Yeah. Gentle. Yeah. But no, this, this one, this one is traditional Oktoberfest aromas of, of like, mm-hmm. for me, bread, like a bread crust. Smells good though. I it like does. a good uh, Oktoberfest. Okay. So that's about the descriptions. Go ahead and take a sip there, Chris. Hmm. The monks had it right. Bread in a glass. So this beer is a bit lighter than that mahogany red lager as far as the mouthfeel. It feels a little bit uh, not as uh, heavy. Uh, uh, light, refreshing. Um, has some bread dough character on the, on the, the front end. Finishes uh, uh, pretty dry, actually. It's amazing how dry this is for an Oktoberfest. Mm. Um, I, I do get some some sweetness, s- sense of sweetness, but it's not sweet. I wouldn't say this was a sweet Oktoberfest. No, not at all. Easy drinking. Uh, a beer that I could easily drink a liter of or three. Uh, it is 6.25, six and a quarter ABV. Hey, so this really? is also uh, pretty big, right? It's over 6%. Um, tastes great. I have no complaints at all. One of the complaints that I typically have of a uh, Oktoberfest that, that if I had a complaint is I don't like, I don't like Oktoberfest that come across with a bitter finish. Hmm. This does not have a bitter finish. It just comes across dry, drier but without the bitterness and that makes it very easy to drink, uh, very refreshing. Um, I mean, there is a little bit, I, I say refreshing, not in a sense of like a summer ale or something that's going to like zip you into uh, fun frolicking, but refreshing in, in a way that uh, it just makes you like, like it will quench your thirst. If you have a, a, a deep thirst, it's very easy drinking. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this beer a lot. I am and now again, it has over 40,000 ratings. So I guess a 3.79 or 3.8 rating is good. I, I'm going to say that this Oktoberfest, as far as I'm concerned, is a, a minimum of four cap rating. Um, I love, I like this beer a lot. It's got a lot of, of malt character up front. If I say anything, Maybe the hops are a little bit lacking. Um, it's mostly a malt forward flavor profile and malt finishing profile as well. Um, but I'll take some more sips and make sure I'm not, not missing anything. <laughs> make sure I, if I have to change my mind. There might be a slight floral character in there in the hops but nothing that is overwhelming the flavor profile it's still very malt centric um with maybe a a slight floral hop character in there just to balance it out great oktoberfest really really enjoying this a minimum of four, maybe a four and a quarter. I'll, I'll make my decision after I get done with the show <laughs> and I log these beers into untapped. Uh, hopefully if I remember to, but uh great beer. Thank you, Jeff. I mean, yeah, thank Jeff. you very thank much. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> I got Jeff on the mind. Um, another new Glarus beer. This is probably my fourth new Glarus beer that I've had of all time. And it's a great one. Uh, so far I have not, had any issues with any new glares beer that I've had. And I, I think, I don't think I've rated one less than four caps. So that's saying a lot from a brewery that is the biggest in Wisconsin and what, like the fifth largest in the 
country. <laughs> yeah, like that. that was that was another thing. I remember when we looked at that one. I, this is my uh, my my fifth new Glarus beer. Is it? Yeah, you know, it, no big deal. But you know, no, but they they make some solid beers. I I mean, it's just amazing that they they don't release these outside of the state. I mean, mm -hmm. these are good beers. I really I really enjoyed all of them I've had. So that just really means that we're gonna have to make a trip to Wisconsin uh, to. To try out more new Glarus stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Good beer. Thank you, Bill. I really appreciate that beer. Because okay, uh, Chris. According to New Glarus's untapped account, they have 107 beers. They have 107? I'll say that again. They have 107 beers. So what's funny is that they they changed their website to whatever beers are like wrote like seasonal so i went to try to find this beer on their website they didn't have it on the website because they already rotated to the next seasonal mm -hmm. section so that's pretty cool oh damn i just Lovely. realized that i didn't prepare the uh, patreon toast tonight but chris it is time to go ahead and raise our glass and we still have some beer left uh we, this show is going a little longer than i was hoping let's go ahead and close this out before we do that let's raise a glass to someone you'd like to raise a glass to tonight. So who I, would that be? I don't know how you do that. You, every time we've been going, oh yeah, look, I've got a little bit of beer left and you're <laughs> down here. I've still got a freaking <laughs> half a beer left. Well, uh, you know what? The beer goes down very as easy good. as Denny does. Yeah. yeah when it, when, when the beer is good, <laughs> Denny goes down goes easy, easy as beer. Wait. All right. <laughs> well, I would love to raise a glass to, you know, one of my favorite adults in this world it's going to be my dad's birthday when this sh the day that this show releases. He's going to be celebrating his 65th birthday. Wow. So, Dad. Uh, he's young. Holy smokes. He's a young man. He is a young fella. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. He started early. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Dad, cheers to you. Happy birthday. I love you. Cheers, and Rodney. Cheers you many more. Cheers. Uh, Denny. This is this is unusual. This is very weird to me because I got my notes in today and you, well, I you, just you I well, yeah. You know what? It's going out the Johan Halberd. Yes. Cheers to you, Johan. I made a decision. <laughs> I wasn't ready, but uh you <laughs> are getting toasted tonight with the Patreon toast. I I spent so much time writing up the beer brew buzz and I was hoping I was going to get home early tonight to finish up some, I didn't, if you notice, I didn't do the, the beer, the beer uh, terminology segment because I didn't have time to get it set up. Um, but oh, well, but Hey, to you, Johan Halberg, thank you for your patronage uh, right into the show. Let us know how you're doing. Uh, let us know what beers you're brewing and, and what new cool gear you have and, and uh, what your plans are to opening your own commercial brewery in Sweden. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Love to hear it. And of course, being a former serviceman, I want to raise my glass and thank all those who have served and are currently serving in the U.S. military services, protecting our freedoms. Thank you for your service. And please return home safe to your families very soon. We don't have a sponsor. Chris is working on finding a new sponsor, but you can find the beers and links to the articles mentioned in the show in the show notes located on the show post at tapthecraft.com and if you'd like to follow us on social media i can be found on twitter instagram and on tap at loose screw chris how can our listeners follow you um so i'm gonna hop on twitter and talk to your troll as uh, chris underscore mckenzie 82 <laughs> or you can find me on untapped and instagram at mck1345 but don't forget you can always interact with us on everything social at tap the craft all right, it is last call. It's time to bring the show to a close. We want to thank you for downloading and listening. We ask you to please, please tell a friend. And of course, subscribe on your favorite podcast app. And as a reminder, we release a new show every two weeks. Now go out there and spread the good word of craft beer. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>